So the Otter Creek Labs Polonium K. So I got this silencer about four months ago and I put 1600 rounds on it between my 11 and a half inch SBR and my 16 inch uh, SPR, I guess you could say. So we'll go through some specs real quick. It is 1.6 inches in diameter. It is 4.8 inches long. Um, it's got a six millimeter bore. It's a dedicated 5.56 can, but it does have a six millimeter bore, so you can run six arc and six Creedmoor, or whatever you want to run through it, as long as it's six millimeter or less. It is fully stainless steel, full auto rated, I think down to a seven and a half inch 5.56 barrel, so it's plenty tough. It's 12 ounces without this mount, and it's 14 ounces with this reared mount, but it's a uh, Obviously it's lightweight just because of the, the size. It's about you'd expect for a stainless steel can of this size, but really not too bad. It balances well on most rifles. So the mounting options on it, it's hub compatible, so you can run uh, Silencer Co, ASR, you can run Dead Air Chemo, Dead Air Xeno, uh, Q Plan B and Reardon, and the Q Plan B and Reardon is what I prefer because it's uh, short and lightweight, and if you're running a K can, you probably are prioritizing length, so if you don't run the direct thread mount that it comes with, it does come with a direct thread mount, I would suggest the Q Plan B or the Reardon. So let's get into sound performance. Uh, for a K-Can, this is easily the quietest K-Can I've heard for 5.56. I haven't been around too many K-Cans, and most of the K-Cans I've been around are 30 cal cans, so take it for what it's worth, but I had never ever planned on getting a K-Can because they all really sucked. Every single one I was around was just like, you might as well just run a flash hider with how loud they were and everything. So, But I'd only really been around the, the Dead Air Sandman K and that thing was pretty terrible. And then the uh, Silencer Co. Saker 5.56K, it was decent, but this is still better. And uh, let's see, what other K-Cans? Yankee Hill, I think it was. It was, a, it was a cheaper one. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't great. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's about it for K-Cans have been around. But this silencer sounds really, really good on 5.56. It sounds like most full-size silencers I've heard, if not better. Um, I haven't heard a ton of dedicated 5.56 silencers, but from what I can remember, this really performs like a full-size 5.56 silencer, which is really, which is really impressive for the length. Um, I have a lot of 30 cal silencers, and this one at the muzzle performs better than all of my 30 cal silencers, and all my 30 cal silencers are seven inches. And uh, the noise at the port, which is what affects the shooter the most, is similar, but when you're shooting a, a short can, it's pretty impressive that it can hang with full-size 5.56 ounces and full-size 30 cal silencers, and especially at a price point of $550, I forgot to mention that. I don't know of any other silencer that has this, I guess what I'd call a, like performance ratio. For the price, for the length, for the weight, like everything you're getting, I can't think of another silencer that is this good. The sound at the muzzle is kind of a deep tone uh, when you're like a, when you're watching somebody shoot it or just off to the side, it's you really get an idea of how impressive this sounds. Um, it's a deep tone, it's a nice tone. A lot of K-cans, like it's, it sounds like a gunshot, just a little bit quieter, but you still have like the boom of a gunshot. But with this, you really get like what a silencer sounds like. It's just kind of a, a deep tone. I don't know, it, it sounds really good. Now as far as gas blowback on this thing, uh, the thing that held the original polonium back for a lot of people was, or the full size polonium I should say, was the back pressure. It had a fairly significant amount of back pressure where you really had to tune your host rifle for it. Um, it was, it's super quiet but just a little too much gas for a lot of people. But this one is not bad at all. My BCM is fairly over gassed to begin with but I put a Radian Raptor SD and a Geisley Super 42 H3 buffer, and I'm getting about 230 ejection, and I do feel a little bit of gas to the face, but I only really notice it when I'm moving or when I'm shooting in the prone, but it's not enough to make my eyes water, it's just like you feel it and you can kind of smell it. It's not too bad, like for the performance you get, I'm willing to take that little bit of gas, and if I wanted to go a little bit further and get an adjustable gas block, I could pretty much eliminate the blowback, but um, you do need to 
uh, tune your rifle a little bit, most likely if you get this silencer. For my 16 inch rifle, it's a Daniel Defense. So Daniel Defense is notoriously over gas, but it's a longer barrel and uh, I put it, uh, same thing, Geisley H3 in there and it runs really nice. I get three o'clock, sometimes four o'clock ejection. And occasionally, and I don't know if this is, if it's a little oversprung, maybe I ought to drop down to an H2, but occasionally with the 77 grain ammo I've noticed particularly, I don't get a last round hold open, not like probably 20% of the time it won't lock back, but I'm willing to to deal with that for the performance I get. I'm not, I don't really want to mess with anything. And on the 16 inch rifle, it's incredibly quiet. I know you're supposed to wear hearing protection always, even with silencers, especially with AR-15s, because like I said, a lot of the noise comes out of the port. But on that 16 inch rifle, I am very comfortable shooting shooting it with this without earplugs. And so I originally had bought this silencer for my 11 and a half inch SBR, but it's spent more time lately on my uh, 16 inch SPR. So I'm pretty excited about it. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. And I'm hoping to buy either another polonium K to leave on this so I can leave this one on there or get a different silencer to review. I'm really interested in the cat white bread, but we'll see. This is really hard to beat for 550 bucks. So flash suppression. Um, I haven't shot any other 556 five, can at night to be fair but this does have an integrated flash hider on the outside and apparently on the inside too. I don't know what that looks like, but I was looking at their specs and they say there's an integrated flash hider on the inside, but um, I don't notice hardly any, like if I'm shooting just under white light, I don't see any. Under night vision, occasionally I'll get like a small jet and I haven't been able to look at it from like the shooter's perspective just cause I, I typically shoot alone and uh, I can only film one thing, so. Yeah, I don't have any footage of that really, but it's really impressive. Like you don't need to worry about this thing giving you away. Like it's it's a really effective flash hider. Um, after about a mag and a half, and this really kind of only pertains to night vision, but after about a mag and a half of like fairly quick firing rate, like this will start to glow a little bit under night vision, but not enough to like give you away from a far distance. But like you'll see it yourself, just kind of a, just steady glow, but uh, I don't really think, I think that's pretty much every silencer, especially these titanium ones, they heat up incredibly fast. But anyway, just something to be aware of. So I think as a conclusion, I would get this silencer if you are looking for, like I said, the, the performance ratio for the length, especially the cost and everything like that, this is a hard one to beat. This is the highest performing silencer when you take into account all those details. Um, I think really the only downside is like, it is a little heavy, I mean, but it's stainless steel and with this length, it's, it's manageable on basically every rifle, but, um, and the blowback where you will probably have to tune your rifle just a little bit, but again, that's probably up to you. If you have an H2, uh, give it a try, see how you like it. You may, if, and if you're getting a little bit of gas, swap it for an H3 and get a rating Raptor SD and, there you go, your rifle's tuned. So um, yeah, I think this is a solid buy for basically anybody looking for a 5.56 silencer. So thank you for watching. And I forgot to mention um, accuracy, I guess, with this. It'll depend, I think, mostly on your mount and where all mine have these Q and reared and taper mounts. I have never ever noticed, because like I said, I bounce them between this rifle and my 16 inch rifle sometimes pretty much lived on my 16 inch rifle lately, but um, when I take it on and off, I notice zero uh, point of impact shift. And with my 16 inch SPR, I check it zero pretty frequently and it's still holding its groups uh, where I zeroed it every time I take it on and put it back or take it off and put it back on. And honestly, I don't, uh, I zero all my guns with the silencer on and I don't really shoot them without the silencer so I haven't even checked the zero with it on versus off because I, al I always shoot it with it on so uh, probably an oversight by me it would have been good for this review but it's for me I don't I shoot with this on all the time so it's not really worth uh, checking for me and I don't think it would be off enough to make like to 
affect your hit ratio that bad. But yeah, so as far as accuracy, this thing, pretty great. When you take it on and off, it holds at zero. So thank you.